The results that we saw in the previous, uh, we arrived uh, uh, in, in the previous slides, uh, has been obtained under the assumptions that there is one uh, entity that we call the benevolent uh, uh, di dictator that has a perfect knowledge of uh, all the society and uh, can choose the levels of uh, uh, consumptions and extraction of natural resources in the first lessons or uh, today just uh, the extraction of natural resources such that the welfare is maximized and we found how uh, you should uh, choose uh, these uh, these levels but how will things will change when uh, instead of having this entity we have instead uh, a set of uh, individually uh, behaving uh, agents in the economy and in particular in perfectly competitive markets we have a set of profit maximizing uh, uh, firms that uh, each of these choose uh, the level that maximize its own profit. So let's suppose that we we have uh, M competitive uh, firms, uh, extraction uh, of uh, natural resources f firms, and for each of them, so we have no longer one one optimizations, but we have that each of these firms will have their own uh, optimizations of maximizing the profit from zero of capital T of the discounted profit. And let's notice that now we are using I as discount uh, rate. And uh, the idea is that I is the uh, market discount rate is really the the rate when you go to the bank and and you borrow some money or uh, in more precisely is the rate that uh, you would invest your own your money for an active activity of uh, uh, of equal uh, level of risk and uh, the most important things here is that because we s are supposing that we are in perfectly competitive uh, uh, markets we are also assuming that our individual uh, agents are somehow small enough that they do not influence, they don't have the capacity to influence the markets. They are price takers, okay? Price taker. So for them, they have to choose how much resource extract each year, but the price at which they will sell the, the resource is exogenous to them. It is the market price and they have no way to influence it. And uh, overall, the set of, uh, of uh, firms, they have a subject to the same physical constraints, but uh, the, the the overall amount of resource that uh, they extract by all the set of uh, of uh, of firms on across the whole period must be equal to the initial set of uh, of resource uh, the initial stock of uh, resource av available it turns out that while each individual uh, firm is uh, maximizing its own profit under uh, perfectly competitive uh, uh, markets, the uh, solutions that we have from this system of uh, uh, individually uh, maximizing agents is the same as under the benevolent dictatorship, that is, we have the maximization of the uh, social, uh, uh, of, the wealth, of the welfare in the society. And this is really a highly remarkable uh, result is uh, this concept uh, originally uh, came from uh, um, Adam Smith is the concept of the invisible hand. The really the idea that you optimize, uh, you maximize your own uh, interest and doing your own interest, you make the society better off. Still, for this to work, uh, we must be under a perfect market condition and nothing is perfect in this world. In particular, 
there are three important assumptions that must be uh, satisfied for uh, this to be true. And uh, the first one is that the interest rate that we observe in the market of capitals, so the market interest rate, must be equal to the social discount rate rho, that is on uh, the preference of the society for the present rather than the future. The second thing is that the resource must be owned by, uh, by someone, by the competitive firms. It doesn't really matter in general who own a resource. Is if it's owned by, by one rather than another one, there will be a transfer of welfare between, uh, between economic agents. But for efficiency, what is really important is that the resource is owned by someone. Third point to guarantee efficiency is that the individual companies, individual firms, must be in the conditions to or to efficiently maximize their profit. And to do that, they must know the future price of, uh, the, they must be able to forecast the future prices of the resources. Only in, in this way, they can maximize their profits and hence maximize the social welfare. Let's see now how things change when instead of considering many firms in a competitive settings, we consider a situation where there is only one single firm that has a monopoly over a natural resource. This could be, for example, uh, the case of uh, Saudi Aramco in uh, Saudi Arabia, when there is only one firm that has the control of all the reserves. Uh, even in this case, this is a monopoly on over one single country while we are speaking now in this slide of a monopoly of all the reserves uh, for in the world for this uh, this resource so how things change uh, if you see the objective of the uh, of the company of this company this is not much different than what we saw with competitive markets yes instead of uh, having uh, many firms uh, that uh, maximize their, uh, uh, their profit. Here we have only one single firm that maximizes its uh, uh, discounted profit, but the basic idea is uh, the same. Uh, still, the key difference is that uh, while under free markets, under competitive markets, the price of the natural resource, the market price, would be exogenous to any firms participating in the markets because they are uh, small enough that the, the price for them is exogenous. And then we arrive at competitive, at uh, marginal revenues equal uh, price because so the, the profit is made for, for a, a company that sell uh, natural, that extract and sell the natural resource is made by the price of the natural resource, by the amount of uh, the natural resource that it sells. So in case of, uh, com of uh, um, competitive markets, price is exogenous. So when we consider the marginal profit with respect to the level of uh, uh, output of, uh, of amount of a, of a resource that uh, is uh, uh, extracted and put to the market, this marginal uh, uh, profit is equal to price, okay? In a monopolistic setting instead, price is no longer fixed. We say that in, from the, we, from the demand uh, functions that the marginal price with respect to the amount of uh, resource uh, put to the market is typically negative. If I put more resource in a given moment uh, to the markets, its price will, uh, will go down. So the, 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 the thing to choose, the level of a resource to put to the market to extract and put to the market at any given point in time for uh, for this uh, monopolistic uh, 
firm, it has an impact also on the price that is able to get at that moment in time. So the price, now the profit is given still by price, by uh, uh, level of um, resources put to the markets, but the price now depends from uh, uh, from the from this amount of resource that is put to the to the market so when we take the marginal profit this marginal profit will be we apply the chain rule so it will be the marginal price that multiply r plus p so it will be something different than just the price that was the case for uh, um, for uh, um, uh, competitive uh, uh, markets. In both cases, the constraints is the same. That is the marginal variation in time of uh, of the uh, stock of natural resources is equal to minus the uh, extraction uh, of, uh, of the resource. Here, there should be a dot. There is a bug in uh, open office, so I cannot put a dot. Uh, there is a line, but here, there should be the dot, the first derivative of stock with respect to time. So the necessary conditions for uh, profit maximization w in a case of monopo uh, uh, mo monopolistic uh, uh, firm, it states that is the marginal profit uh, uh, and no longer the price that has to follow the uh, hoteling rule in order to maximize the discounted uh, profit. Why is that? We are going to see in the next slide uh, analytically, but uh, intuitively, why it is the marginal profit? Because for the company, the the the. <laughs> The shadow of price, the, um, um, the return from extracting uh, the, uh, a marginal unit of uh, resource is not longer its price, it is its marginal profit. And uh, we saw that for uh, market companies, the marginal profit was equal to price, and this was the reason why at the core uh, free markets lead to the same result as a benevolent dictator. But now the situation is no longer true because marginal profit uh, with respect to extraction of natural resource is different. And we are going to see now uh, analytically uh, how we can set uh, and the problem and get the analytical solution. So from the point of view of uh, uh, the a, a single uh, maximizing profit uh, monopolistic uh, uh, company, we have a, a constrained optimization, uh, um, a dynamic constrained uh, optimization. So the way to solve it, uh, uh, that the firms can solve it, is using uh, optimal control theory. And uh, by now, you should be able to uh, write your own uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So I invite you to pa pause the video and try to write uh, the Hamiltonian for this uh, constrained uh, uh, optimization. Okay. So the Hamiltonian is made by the uh, objective functions plus the, sh the cost state variable that uh, uh, that uh, multiply the um, the equation of motion of our uh, state variable that is the stock of natural resources. We call it mu here. We didn't call it p. In uh, in the other case before we did before we called the cost state variable the price of the natural resources, but here we just let it mu because we are going to see in a moment which is the interpretation that we give now to this cost state variable, okay? So that is, again, the shadow of price for the monopolistic firms of extracting the resource. So when we, uh, we apply the first order conditions in terms of, uh, uh, of the Hamiltonian in terms of the control variable that is the decision for the firm of how much to extract at each moment in times. Well, 
we obtain that our uh, uh, cost state variable is the marginal profit, is no longer the price, is the marginal profit. And uh, because here, here is zero, so the uh, adjoint equations in terms of the cost state variable tell us that the growth rate of the cost state variable must be equal to, to, I, to the interest rate and the cost state variable is the marginal profit, we can see that now the Otelli rule is given in terms of the marginal profit, no longer in terms of, uh, the, uh, of the price of uh, uh, the natural, uh, natural resource, because it is this marginal profit that is for the firms, the shadow of price to uh, extract or not extract the uh, a marginal unit more of the resource. So, because uh, this is negative, the marginal uh, price of the resource I is negative because as I said uh, a few minutes ago, more, you, more natural resource in a given moment in time, think it statically, more you put a supply to the market, High lower will be the price, so this is negative, and uh, because this is negative, this is uh, uh, positive, so this is negative. We can see that the marginal profit at each moment in time is uh, uh, lower than uh, the uh, the price of the of the of the resource, except at the last moment in time when the ex resource uh, extraction is equal to to zero. Finally, because it is the marginal profit that follow the Otelli rule, and hence it is the growth rate of the marginal profit to be equal exactly to the uh, market interest rate. When we consider for discounting the uh, market interest rate, the discounted value remain, uh, of the marginal profit remain constant. So let's going to see how in case of monopolistic markets, our solution change compared with the social uh, social optima. Well, I'm not going to. I'm going to go very fast. I leave you the mathematics uh, uh, here on the slides. Uh, but we are doing the same, exactly the same things we did uh, uh, for the social optima. So this is the. Uh, demand specific demand equations we are going to employ and uh, this is the formulation of the profit for the firms and uh, given this one we can find the uh, the uh, optimal uh, um, resource extraction path at each moment in, in time optimal for the point of view of the monopolistic firms, of course. And uh, we can do in a little bit of uh, computations. We can uh, find uh, the optimal uh, timing to extract the, the resource and the initial price. And this is the path of uh, price at each moment in time. So that's going to make uh, a comparison between uh, who, which are the solution under perfect competitions or social optima and which are the solutions under monopoly. Here there is one constant that we use it to, uh, to simplify some computations where h is uh, approximately equal to 2.5. So if you take the exhaustion time, here we see that under monopoly is a little bit uh, higher. So time to extract the resource is higher. The initial uh, price, because this is under the denominator, so this is uh, higher, but here is negative. So this one, the price is, uh, uh, the initial price is higher the price grow with a grow rate that is lower, so it grow slower the price uh, compared with uh, uh, the social optima. And uh, 
the initial resource extractions is because the price is uh, the initial price is higher so the initial uh, resource extracted is uh, um, is uh, lower so i think we are better off saying this uh, uh, graphically so this is the comparison between uh, um, uh, this line that is maybe i should put it uh, this the mon the price and uh, mm, the monopolistic firms and this is the re resource extractions while this one is under perfect competition and the demand curve is the same so we arrive at the, the, the choke price is the same because this is given by the demand, uh, the, the specific uh, uh, form and parameters of the demand functions. But we see that under uh, monopolistic firms, we start with a higher price. The price grow with a slower, uh, sleep, uh, slower grow and arrive to the choke price later in time compared with the monopolistic uh, firms and uh, the the resource extractions start uh, slower and but it's it stay the extraction of the resource stay longer of course the stock of the initial resource is the same and all must be used so what is here in the green era must be equal to this area here being equal to the stock of initial resource. 